Father Thomas Hopko of Blessed Memory needs little introduction. He is one of the most beloved and influential figures in American Orthodoxy in the past century. Perhaps more than any other Orthodox figure in America, Father Tom bridged the gap between the academy and the parish, as well as between the pre-internet and the internet worlds. He was a prolific podcaster, producing over 400 podcasts, touching on nearly every aspect of the Orthodox Christian faith. Ultimately, however, Father Thomas was a pastoral academic who brought decades of pastoral experience into his work as a professor and eventually as Dean of St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary. It has been five years now since Father Tom's untimely repose, and it seems appropriate to remember his rich life and contribution to the Orthodox Church in America. I was blessed to meet Father Tom on a number of occasions, one of which was in the summer of 2010 when he graciously agreed to sit down with me for this interview. That morning, it was a Sunday, we celebrated the liturgy in the monastery chapel and then went to the refectory for lunch. The sisters sat me next to Father Tom, and for the next couple of hours I was blessed to listen to him discuss all sorts of topics, from Orthodox theology and church history to American history and politics, among other things. Father Tom effortlessly made connections from the breadth and depth of his knowledge, and I had the impression that I could simply follow him around with an audio recorder and produce books from his remarkable conversation. It was a joy to spend time with him, and I'm glad to finally be able to make the fruit of that interview available to the world, albeit 10 years later. Sometimes I think that the issue of the church is perhaps the most difficult one and the one where you really have to kind of change your mind to understand, uh, you know, the Lord and John the Baptist and St. Peter begin all their preaching with repent, which means change your attitude, change your way of looking at things. And here, uh, when it comes to the church, uh, the church is an object of faith for Orthodox. We confess one God, the Father Almighty, one Lord Jesus Christ, one Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. And we confess one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And the church is the Kachal Israel. It's a, it, the Ecclesia is the translation of Kachal in the New Testament, and even in the Greek Old Testament, which means the assembly or gathering of the people when the Lord himself is present and presiding within the community. It's not just a gathering or assembly of people. It's where the Lord constitutes, guides, inspires, instructs, and actually acts within the life of his people. So it's an assembly of people. It's a, it's a communion of people. In the earliest uh, church, uh, Ignatius of Antioch called the Christian church a henosis uh, pistios ke agapis. It's a union of uh, faith and love uh, of actual people. And it's concrete. It's in history. It has a history. It's not a platonic ideal. It's not invisible. It's visible. Uh, it's in history. If you would ask me any, uh, name a century, and I would name to you where we saw the church that we believe in and who it was and where it was and what was going on, I can do it for you. However, from the earliest Christian time, what they call nowadays the Jesus movements, there were always heresies and divisions and everything from the beginning. It's not like there was one church and then it split up. You sometimes get that teaching. It's not true. Uh, I mean, if you read the New Testament, Peter is, was fighting with Paul. Paul was fighting with James, you know, about how we understand the Christian faith. Uh, but by the time of the end of the first century, you have this community of faithful that we see as the Orthodox, those who canonized these particular writings and said, these are the true ones, but within a community of people. Now, that community exists through history, and it's and it's it's Christ's own body, it's Christ's own bride, it's God's own people, it's a royal priesthood, it's uh, it's a temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you use New Testamental terms uh, like Ephesians, it says God uh, raised and glorified Christ, who was crucified, making him the head over all things, hyperpanda ti ecclesia for the church, head of all things for the church, which is his body, soma the fullness of him who fills all in all. Uh, or in uh, Timothy letter, it says, uh, I'm writing to show you how to behave in the household of God, the ecos of God, uh, which is the pillar and the bulwark of the truth. 
So there is this community uh, which is keeping the faith and properly preaching, properly teaching, properly worshiping. And this has a history. Now, it, when you finally get to the fourth century where a creedal statement is made, it says that this church is one. There are not many. There's one. So every church has to be the church, not a church. Uh, it's holy with the very holiness of God. It's catholic -y. It's full and complete, nothing missing. And by the way, Catholic doesn't mean universal. It means qualitatively full, complete, with nothing lacking. And then, of course, it's apostolic. It has the same mission as Christ himself. Christ is sent by God. Apostello means the one who sent. Uh, Christ sends the Spirit. Christ breathes on the apostles, sends the apostles. So the church has a mission. It's a missionary. It's an apostolic company uh, in the world. And of course, through history, that took different forms in different times. And of course, there was a period of Orthodox history when it could not be missionary because it was under Turks and they'd kill you if you converted anybody. But at that same period, from Kiev and Ukraine all the way to Siberia and Alaska, the Russian Orthodox Church converted people in a territory three times the size of the United States. So it was a definitely missionary enterprise. But anyway, it's a communion. And I like uh, to use an expression of Father Alexander Schmemann about the church. He said, the church is not an institution with doctrines and sacraments, with teachings and mysteries. He said, the church is a community of people with teachings and mysteries. It's a mystery with institutions. It's not an institution with mysteries. So the church that we believe in is a sacramental theological reality. And here you have the problem of the bureaucratic institutional church, which is always in trouble, always, you know, sinful, usually persecuting the saints. Uh, you know, uh, the institutional church is a huge problem. There's even a saying in Orthodoxy, you haven't yet suffered with Jesus until you've suffered from the church institution. And who killed Jesus? If you translate it into modern Greek English, it would be the bishops, the presbyters, the priests, the canon lawyers, and the theologians. I mean, you know, uh, so there's always this uh, terrible uh, uh, conflict, this clash within. And as Father Florovsky used to say, the true church is not the perfect church. It's got sinners. It's made up of sinners. Nevertheless, the bottom line would be this. It teaches the right doctrine and celebrates the proper worship in spirit and truth. And here we Orthodox would say about um, Roman Catholics and Protestants, you know, there's a saying in Deuteronomy that is quoted in the Apocalypse, in the book of Revelation, that you don't add and you don't take away. And so the Orthodox in their polemics likes to say the Latin Roman Catholics added all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be there, especially the papacy and all that. Whereas the Protestants took away stuff that belonged to the church. The sacramental mysteries of baptism, Eucharist, chrism, marriage, these are all mystical elements of the church itself. So you wouldn't look at the church as an institution, ask how many sacraments it has, and Catholics say seven, Protestants say two or two and a half or something. Well, we say that's not the way you look at it. Uh, so it has to have its institutional aspects, but basically it's not an institution. It's a mystery of human life and community keeping the faith and worshiping, but not without persecution, not without affliction, not without martyr's blood. And basically it's the saints that keep the church going through history. <laughs> it's the saints. But they keep that church in apostolic succession from the apostles till today. And we Orthodox believe that we can trace our church back right to the apostles. And we would say this, you can't be the one true church of Christ without apostolic faith and apostolic tradition and apostolic worship. But you can have apostolic succession without having the apostolic faith, without having apostolic worship. But you can have apostolic worship and apostolic faith without the actual historical tradition through history, which we believe we have from the very beginning. So we believe in the church as a mystical sacramental entity guided and protected by God through history that is a clear witness to the gospel in what it formally teaches and how it worships as a community. And that's how we would understand what orthodoxy is. Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Thomas Hopko of Blessed Memory. Please subscribe to get notified when new episodes become available. And if you enjoy the content on this channel, please consider supporting it. There's a link to the support page on our website below this video. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend and we'll see you soon.